there we go i've unmuted myself now flustered before we even started guys can you hear me now if you can hear me now just let me know yeah jason i get it no sound grant yes i get it do you know what there's always summer and now it's me so guys it, there's about a 10 second delay so you should start to hear me now if you can hear me say something there we go john can you hear me in the green room because if you can that's all good dear me let's have a check well, there we go have we got sound yet have we got sound yet give me a thumbs up if we've got sound the, the hooray is that for sound yes you're on thank you Whew. thank you jeff i thought we'd be here all night going out can you hear me now um so yes so every week there's a technical issue this week is absolutely no different um this guest was supposed to be on a couple of weeks ago we had some technical issues um, and weirdly after the show was finished we managed to connect we video chatted for about an hour and talking loads of you know great hypnosis stuff this guy's an absolute kind of power base of knowledge when it comes to hypnosis um you guys know who he is he is the trans master it is john sabone for those of you that are familiar he's got a very famous red pen um, and he does some very 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 fast inductions so we're going to display our graphic and then after that we're going to get him on if you've got any questions for john then please hit them up in the comment section and then we'll ask john live and you can get his advice on whatever it is that you need So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please make some noise for the man, the myth, the legend that is the trance master, John Sabone. John, are you there? Can you hear me now, John? No. John. <laughs> Your screen's frozen, John. Hang on one second. John, if you can hear me, please just refresh your screen and that will bring you in. Don't do this to me, John. <laughs> so, guys. He is here. I can see him in my screen, uh, but his screen's frozen. So, John, I'm going to kick you out. Please click the link and come back in. Let's not do this again. Let me just send him this link now. Dear me. Talk about flying from the CC pants. This is the joys of being live. John, I'm sending you the link now. Click it. Come back in. There we go. So, guys, in his ear he is here we did a technical run through for this about 20 minutes ago as well so he's, he's got it everything's fine i just think it might be an internet issue at the moment so holding there everything is fine come on Grant. yeah i know jason i know jason this is the joys of live <laughs> i mean maybe john just doesn't like me <laughs> so yeah so he is here take three this is take four alan is this so whilst john's connecting um we're going to try and figure this out again so where is it it's in there so yeah, John is the trance master, John Sabone. Uh, those of you who know him from the butterfly induction, uh, the speed trance DVDs, you know, he really knows his onions when it comes to that. John, click the link, mate. <laughs> there we go. I'm not much like this in Mackie's gone. I know. <laughs> Cheers, Mark. So I hope you guys have had a great season there as well. He's invisible. Yes, I know. He is he is here. He is going to click in. Come on, John. <laughs> so guys, so I'm waiting for John again um we did have some technical issues with a different computer earlier we managed to get through that and uh, we're going to get through this um he is here guys thank you for your uh, it's for the excitement go i know i know so we're waiting for john to come back in so guys um how are you guys doing uh, is anybody doing shows yet uh how are shows for you guys uh i actually have a show booked in tomorrow night um uh, fingers crossed uh, whereas where i'm in we're going to tier three um, on Monday, so it'll be interesting to do a Halloween show just before that, which is going to be socially distanced. Um, it looks like John is somewhere, but we don't know where now. <laughs> so, guys, what can we talk about? So, uh, Jeff Bennett, no shows yet. No, I know. I must admit, it's it's weird, and it's the responsibility of doing a show safely within the kind of COVID environment as well. Uh, this is a show that's been booked in for a while and we're, we're doing it as a, a you know very limited audience very limited on stage no touching of the participants you know it's absolutely craziness um and i think the whole entertainment industry uh, right now is is just trying to find its feet trying to find how the processes you know we work are, are going to kind of do what we need to do not just in in stage hypnosis but in in any type of thing 
Tell us more about John. Well, I don't want to take I don't want to take away from John's achievements. John's here to tell us about about him when he does connect. Let me just see if I can catch him again, John. Yeah, so uh, uh, let's talk about anything except COVID. Well done, Jason. Uh, Jason, uh, Jason's here every week. Uh, it was Jason's fifty-first uh, birthday the other day. Was it fifty-one, Jason, or fifty-five? Can't quite remember. It's fifty something. Jason's well into his fifties. Um, I think we have lost John for good now. Uh, bless him. So um, I'm going to keep trying John whilst this goes on. Um, and then I think we should all do a GoFundMe page and try and see if we can send John some internet. Uh, it says that he's online, but he's not connected in. So, yeah, um, I mean, what are you guys doing to divert? What are you pivoting to do? Uh, I have some coaching clients that I see online now. And I think this whole situation has created people to do more of the online stuff. I know it's it's taught me a lot about the technology and how it can go wrong at the last minute. <laughs> Believe it or not, if Jason says careful. Um, Jason, do you know what? If I look as good as you at 55, I'll be a very happy man. Um, Jason's very active as well. He kind of does the, uh, was it the Welsh Extreme 500, which is a cool 4x4 thing. So, no politics either. Now, the politics worldwide is crazy at the moment. And I know uh, I know you guys are going through all that in America at the moment. Uh, how is things over there for you, Alan? Uh, I know you're you're a, a big showman. You're, you know, on the road doing your thing. Um, how is that for you? I know I like to be on the road. I like to be gigging. I'm not so much I'm not so much into the training. I don't really like doing the live feeds. I like to be on the road just traveling just doing my thing and i know you're very much a roadman as well uh, i see you're kind of converting your van or have converted your van for stage stuff which is a brilliant thing to do so yeah so guys um uh, what else is new um i know in 2021 that's going to look like a crazy year i don't think we'll be doing anything for the first part of the year kind of january february march but april going forward we're starting to see much more uh, inquiries coming in now more bookings coming in uh, i've done seven shows since march the 17th it's craziness how how were they how did you find the audience's reactions to that alan um are people nervous about getting up on stage um how are the crowds is it a busy crowd let's see if john's covered that john's definitely not here so what's happened to me this week? Uh, yeah, do you know what we've been doing? We're doing some live feeds. I was uh, I presented an award at the North of England Wedding Awards, which was quite nice. Um, the wedding industry in this going, I I old lustre sound and I lost the sound again. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> so yeah, so uh, we had the wedding awards this week, which was really interesting. The wedding industry in this country has been absolutely decimated. And weirdly, weddings were a big part of my show business. Um, I love doing hypnosis shows at weddings, um, as does Dale Thompson. And uh, there's a couple of other guys in Ireland as well. I know in America, that's a fairly new market, um, but it's, it is a great market as well. Uh, I think I may have John back. Um, I've got a little thing here. And oh, guys, please make some noise. And is here, make some noise for the Transmaster. John Sabone is here, clapping cheer, make some noise. Hello. Say hello, John. Hello. Fantastic. Hi, this whole thing crash. I don't know. You went live and know. the whole thing crash. How do we load it? Oh, uh, there we go. Hi, no, everybody. You are here now. There we go. That's fantastic. So, John, how are you? Um, how are things with COVID with you? How are shows? Let's get, let's get it in fast before we lose you again. So, yeah. Um, how are you embracing the the kind of the new normal? Well, um, let's just say what shows, okay? Because a lot of places won't let you do any shows. Let's talk about um, socially distanced shows. There's been a few of those. Yeah. Um, occasionally, the vendor says to me, the location, you know, like the old uh, speakeasy days, this show never happened. One of those, you know? Yeah. But um, this, this is better than ever when I'm allowed to do them because I've got so much pent up energy being trapped in the house. I can't wait to get out there and do shows. I'm like a tiger in a cage, a 
horse in the starting gate. I want to yeah. get out there and just rock and roll, make it happen, you know? Uh, as for COVID in Staten Island, New York, where I live, um, unless we go into a store, nobody's wearing a mask. Uh, if you're in a store, you have to wear one. You go over to Brooklyn, one county away from here, and everybody's wearing a mask. So it's yeah. a matter of, I guess, mindsets. Yeah. Staten Island, we're tough people. We don't yeah. seem to care. Brooklyn, it's a little different. Yeah. But um, I'm really happy to be I want to thank everybody who showed up for this and for the fact that this crashed a few seconds ago. I had to reload the whole thing. And uh, for the last two weeks ago when it didn't work. So thank you for sticking with me and hanging out. I appreciate it very, very much. It's my honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, um, thank you for having you. know, thank you for being part of the show. It's, it's one of those things that, especially live feeds and live streaming, it's, it's, a, it's a new, a fairly new technology. It's starting to become more mainstream now with Zoom and all those other things. But it's, you know, it's, we are reliant on internet connections. We are reliant on, on technology. We are reliant on all sorts of new things. And as, as it becomes more established as a thing, it, it should get better. But it's it's for me, it's it's like doing a stage show. You've kind of got that, you know, you've got to fly by the seat of your pants. Anything could happen and sometimes does happen. Uh, and so it's it's one of those things. So it's it's a pleasure to have you on for someone that's got, you know, as much experience and knowledge as yourself to be on the show. And hopefully, you know, that offers value to people watching this that, you know, can really learn from that or, you know, it's a great way to touch base as well. What what was your first experience with stage hypnosis? What got you into performing hypnosis? Well, to go back to the very, very early days of my life, my father was a very stressful influence on in my life at a very young age. So even when I was three and four years old, according to what my mom had told me, I used to go upstairs, lay down in bed and blink at the ceiling until my eyes got heavy. And then, then I would get up and I felt really relaxed and they cleaned the room. So I was doing what turned out to be impromptu private sessions with other classmates when I in the grammar school years and high school years and college years, kids thinking about running away from home or committing suicide in some cases. And when they opened their eyes, they didn't want to run away anymore. So about 26 or so years ago, I'm guessing yonder in the past, I'm not really good with time that way unless I look it up. Um, 26, 25, 27 years ago, whatever it was, I was doing some kind of a group program. I believe it was at a just a group of people where I was doing like meditation or something, uh, yeah. a large group of people, because I had started off with meditation professionally before I got certified to do clinical hypnosis. And um, they said to me, like, we just had a party last week to do a fundraiser for a children's hospital with cancer. You know, kids. And can you come in and do something funny next year for us? We did it last week. So that kind of gave me almost a year to learn something. And I was like, do you just want like some demonstration? No, no, no. One of those funny comedy hypnosis shows we saw in college. And this woman piped up. Oh, yeah, I saw it on a cruise. So I started to study stage hypnosis. I studied with the people over the years. And as anybody who knows, once you learn this stuff mm -hmm. and you have a passion for it, it becomes who you are. So I started to take some of the stuff that I learned. Uh, some of the early stuff I did was at county fairs, which are – an insane place to learn how to do stage hypnosis. It's always a baptism of fire for me, you know? I'm always sent to the crazy place first to learn how to do this. Um, I remember being on a stage, for example, it was a trailer that goes on the back of a truck, or as you call it in England, a lorry, you know? Yeah. And the yeah. back of the truck folded open like a toaster oven, and that, that was the stage. And it was a summertime show in August. That stage had to be 125, 130 degrees. I remember I lost about 15 pounds being up on that stage. I was sloshing around in my underwear and shoes. And, you know, fortune favors the bold and the foolish. I went up there and just made this happen. Yeah. And I had an audience. Yeah. My first audiences for that, those events were 10,000 people in a field, you know, uh, gathered. You know, yeah. so I, I didn't walk in to do, <laughs> you know, somebody's retirement party or something or a retirement home. This was getting thrown into 10,000 people in front of a, you know, on a, in a toaster oven for, you know, for all intents and purposes. The one thing I did learn is you don't do you don't do hot room on a stage. It's 130 degrees. That's not a good idea. They perspire. <laughs> when you say to, it hits their eyes. They, they, you lose a few people. But from that, you know, I've had an acting background as well. In college, I did a bunch of acting in various plays. I had the lead role in Arthur Miller's The Crucible, for example, playing John Proctor. 
and I had won a scholarship to the actor studio, and I had to forego that, a free, free, free scholarship. My father was a police detective. He said, actor, really, reach for the gun, you know? So um, I liked being in front of an audience. I liked generating that kind of energy. And between the hypnosis being mm -hmm. a part of who I was from a young age and then getting bit by the bug, as it were, you know, it becomes like the best thing in your life when you're a stage hypnotist if you love what you do. And I love it. I mean, I'd rather be doing a stage hypnosis show than just about anything. It's my favorite thing in the world. So as I started to evolve, I started to write a lot of my own stuff. I understand a couple of years ago there was a gathering for Thanksgiving or Christmas at someone's house in Las Vegas. And my name came up and they were like, you know, he writes most of his own stuff. Yeah, you know, I didn't invent hot and cold, certainly. You know what I mean? We're all doing that. Yeah. But um, I write a lot yeah. of my own routines because I'll wake up at three in the morning with a new idea for something and I'll write it down and then I'll test it. And then once it's tested, I keep tweaking it. I got to be careful to say tweak and twerking. I sometimes confuse those two <laughs> words. Twerking <laughs> is a whole different <laughs> experience, but I'm not tweaking it. I'll start adding things to it. I'll start adapting it. And all of a sudden, it's something very unique and very different. And I work on the same principle as I've been a fan over the years from high school and college, Monty Python. And with interviews, like with John Cleese, for example, he said uh, in an interview that um, they only did things that made them laugh. And they assumed that the rest of the audience might like that. So if I'm finding it really funny in my mind, and then I do it on a stage and the audience likes it, and then I keep embellishing it into something else, it kind of evolves. It's like... Um, like a clay pot that you're molding with your hands, you know? It's like you yeah. just keep shaping it, reshaping yeah. it. And there's always some weird reaction that you're going to get. Like I had, I don't know, 12 years ago, I had an idea like a sheepdog is licking your face. And I got a phone call from a colleague and said, what are you doing tomorrow morning at 3 a.m.? And I was like, what, getting sheep? I don't know. And he said, no, 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 you're going to drive five hours north and go to uh, Massachusetts and do a show. The other hypnotist can't make it. So I got in the car in a rainstorm, much like today, and drove five hours. And I said, the sheepdog is licking your face. And three girls in the middle started French kissing the sheepdog back. Oh. So that made me yeah. laugh, and I could barely stand up, and that became part of the routine. Yeah. So you know if you start to work this stuff, you yeah. keep shaping it. I put that video on YouTube, and within a week, I had hypnotists from England to Australia saying, I tried that in my show, but it didn't work. What did I do wrong? I'm like, you take anything you want. Just ask me first, which they didn't do. But um, yeah. without video, I don't know what you did wrong, you know? But I love this. I am so, so passionate about this. I've worked in dozens of U.S. states. I've headlined in Las Vegas, uh, Broadway, in New York City, yeah. corporate events all over the place. Um, I just love getting out there and doing this because um, once you get them hypnotized and they start jumping around, I mean, the show just does itself at this yeah. point for me, you know? Yeah. I remember the early days when I was doing it by the numbers. Like, this is routine one and this is routine two. Funny red pen again, but that's that's not how that it's it's organic now. Yeah, and I love yeah. that. So, and I, th I think that's I think that's the secret to, to I said the secret. I mean, there's not many secrets to it these days, but you know, <laughs> once it becomes natural, once you kind of get in that flow of it, rather than thinking about it, and if I do this, they'll do that, and this, the, the like you said, the funny finds itself, and it, it does just become that flow. I I love that feeling that once once the shows hit. And you feel that energy in the room, and it's just yeah, it just the show comes from within them. So yeah, what? Yeah, it's always nice to talk about our successes, and but what's what's the worst show you've done? What was the the thing that kind of made you you know that we all have those challenges? Um, I've had many of them in my time. I'm sure you know many others watching this have had them as well. You know, what's that one show that probably taught you more than any other any other show? I can't say I've had a bad show. I can say I've had challenging shows. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you, John, but I can't see you. <laughs> I, I don't know where that went. I'll keep talking until the picture comes back. Yes. Uh, um, I mean, if, the you, if, you refresh your, if you refresh your screen just at the top bar, just click and refresh it, it should reload it. All right. I'm going to do you do that. Yeah, I, I just hope yeah. I don't lose you again. Hold on. There you go. I'll just, I'll waffle. Uh, so, guys, uh, if you can hear us okay as well, if you can hear John as well, please let us know. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, John's a great guy. Uh, I do think he might have some issues with his internet 
uh, or something over there, which might be why it's uh, it's not come through. Um, but yeah, check out John's website as well, which is hypnosisdaycho.com. Um, it's just on the bottom of the screen there now. Um, yeah, check out his trainings as well. Uh, John does a great thing on speed trance, um, and he is a great trainer when it comes to all things stage hypnosis and performance hypnosis, as well as hypnotherapy. Uh, there we go, and I believe we have John back now. I shall click that. He will appear as if it is magic. If it is magic. Is it back? Uh, I've got a space where you should be, and I can, can hear you? you, but I don't know if anyone else can hear you. Uh, I can hear you guys. If you can hear John, let me know. Well, I'll keep talking. Let's just make this work then. Because just keep talking. And let's just make it work. So, yeah. So, uh, Jason uh, Morgan is, is watching. Is is yeah. 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 John. There we go. Hey, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> You're back. There we go. Well, the most difficult Just shows. Like in rehearsal. I've had a lot of. I've had a lot of difficult shows. I've had shows where it starts pouring rain. I did a show for an East yeah. Indian family, a 450 family person reunion for East Indian folks in New Jersey, and it started pouring rain, and um, I was soaked through my socks and my underwear. It was raining very heavy when I got there. Um, it was pouring rain. For a long time, it was outdoors. The show they wiped off the chairs. The woman who hired me through an event planner wanted me to do the pregnant man has a baby sketch, and I was like, I don't want to do that because you have young boys here who are nine years old. They're not going to get what's going on, maybe. Um, and I, I during the induction, it starts pouring rain. I mean, I'm soaked through my clothes, like I jumped in the pool, and. Um, at the end of the show, a rainbow appeared next to me and behind the chairs, and the people thought I created a rainbow. So some of them were reverently in the mud and touching my toe with their finger as a sign of respect to me, like I could make rainbows. But I could make rainbows that work once a year at the American Super Bowl or, you know, some major soccer event, and that would be my job, you know? But yeah. um, I've had other shows where it starts raining, or it's actually snowing was one of them. I did one up in uh, the northeastern part of the United States in Massachusetts, and these kids came out and they were wearing cotton long sleeve t-shirts and the temperature dropped as the show went on from 50 something degrees Fahrenheit to below freezing. Wow. And I kept telling them it was like soup hot, it was equator hot. It's like being in Brazil in the summer and, and they were kind of sweaty and fanning themselves as the snow was coming down. And at the end they said, Ted, open your eyes wide awake. And they screamed and wore hot chocolate and coats. I was so cold in that show. I couldn't hold a mic. My fingers froze. Like that, I had to put gloves on to hold the mic because my fingers were half open and half closed. So I've been right. through a lot of crazy stuff with shows. I've done shows with the audience. They event planners have set. Got to be careful with those event planners. Um, they've sent me in to do shows where um, the audience not primarily speak English. Yes, I've had crowds of Romanians, people who speak yes. Spanish, uh, Portuguese, uh, uh, other countries in Central Europe or Eastern European language, Polish. And I, I told one guy, I was doing a speed induction. I said, look at my finger. He went, huh? I looked at my eyes. I said, no, no, my finger. Huh? So look at him. I, no, no, my, I said, who speaks this guy's language? I just, he came out of me subconsciously. And this guy said, I do. So I did the induction through this translator. Nice. And I've done shows through translators, nice. but they take twice as long. It takes, and you get half as many comedy bits. Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing you can do yeah. about it, but roll. Yeah. I did one in where it was a Spanish, uh, primarily Spanish people who put up fences and for a, a Christmas party. And I, I had this woman translating, and she was, they sent this woman over who translated, but she was drunk. So um, <laughs> so I got the, to one, one point. Was one, drunk called the translator was drunk. The translator was drunk, yeah. So oh. <laughs> I remembered a phrase in Spanish, and I said it in Spanish, and she repeated it in English. I just, after that, I was just used to it. I mean, I was just laughing. But I made it work. You know, yeah. I'm like, drop me. I'm like the special forces. You drop me in. Somehow I'll make it work. I was talking years ago to Mark Kavad out in Las Vegas, and I said to him, some of my Orthodox Jewish groups I work with will not let me do use sound equipment on a Friday evening for religious yeah. reasons. So I had to go to a party store for children, and I found a cone, a megaphone, that you scream into and do the induction with this against your lips, and you're yelling into a hole, basically. So the following night, I was working somewhere else, and it felt strange not to be yelling into a hole. 
you know? My group told me to be 30 people there. There was 350. So I hit the back wall for two hours, a two-hour show with 350 people and no sound system. That's that. that and when I told Mark, is that, a skill. when I told Mark that he kind of doubled over out in Las Vegas, he was like somebody punched him in the stomach. He said, oh, how do you do that? He said, do you like to get paid? He said, yeah. I said, so do I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it's out, it's, no it's such a great motivator for a show. Uh, is that whole getting paid? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to get paid, keep working no matter what happens. You know, there was a great line from the recently deceased Eddie Van Halen. And he said that when he was learning how to play concerts, because his father had been a musician, his father said, he said to his father, what happens if you make a mistake? He said, keep going. And if the audience liked the mistake, smile and then do it a second time. Yeah. And that's great advice for a live performer. Just smile and pretend, oh, I meant to do that, you know? And the audience doesn't know. We're having a great time. I also, my shows, do a lot of speed inductions at the beginning. Sometimes I'll do a couple of my speed trance inductions. So far to date, I've created 90 different speed inductions of my own. Wow. So I'll do a couple, which usually, you know, the audience can be a little rambunctious to settle down, you know. And um, I'll do one or two or three of those, and that's enough to shut the audience up anywhere I go. Yeah. I remember I did a party one time for a, car, a BMW dealership in Brooklyn, a Christmas party. And... The service department was a little out of control. They were drunk, throwing things at each other, you know. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and one guy said, shut up, we're here to get drunk, you know. And I speed hypnotized the owner who was in who was at the beginning of the show. And all of a sudden, they got really quiet. And at the end of the show, when it was over, I got a big round of applause. And I walked out on a veranda in this very expensive pool club uh, place where they had the party. And uh, obviously, it was Christmas. But there's no open pool. It's still a very fancy place. And they were we're so sorry. We apologize to you, sir. We didn't mean to interfere with your show. Please forgive us. Don't do anything to us. I'm like, okay, everybody's cool now. You know, we're all friends. Yeah. Yeah. So I've yeah. had some of those. I mean, yeah. I've had a lot of those, unfortunately. But you know what? It just makes you better at doing this stuff. Yeah. So with anybody who's new watching yeah. this, dig in, get out there, and just beat that drum. Just get out there and don't let anything stand in your way, especially yourself. Get out of your own way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's it's the one bit of advice I always give that you've just got to you've just got to keep going forward. If you have a bad show, just do another show, just do another show, and just keep doing it. You know, the more you do it, the the better you get at it, and the, the more you realise that nobody ever died from doing a bad show. I've died on stage, but no one's ever physically died from doing a bad show. And I've had situations where I think I never want to be in that situation again, but I got through it. And if I can get through that, you can get through anything. And I think they're the ones that they're the ones that train you for the easy shows, you know. So yeah. So what's the best advice I mean, like I said, from, you, I'm sorry. Go on, that again. The best advice I ever got about a tough show was Orman Mill. Orman Mill and I were friends. You know, I knew him for several years before he died. Um, and I one time did his show. I had a rough time at a county fair. There was a guy with a PA system over here announcing pig races literally 15 feet from the edge of the show, and he wouldn't stop talking. And out of 12 people, I kept two elderly gentlemen. I lost the 10 women that were in the show. And if the two men even responded post-hypnotically. I gave them a suggestion. We're being dragged around by a dog, a post-hypnotic suggestion. One guy took his grandson and put him on the floor, and, and on the ground, and on the grass, actually, and then was being dragged around by the dog, you know? So I called up Borman, and I was all upset, and he said to me, did you keep at least one? I said, I kept two. He said, did they applaud? I said, like crazy. He said, did you get paid? I said, yes. He said, you had a hit show. You're not there to drop bombs. Yeah. yeah. So I take, I shared yeah. a bit of wisdom from the ancient master, you know? Yeah. So so pig racing, that's not something we have in the UK. Um, is that actually a thing? Do you have pig racing at like county fairs, state fairs out there? Yeah, they have little tiny pigs. And they line them up like horses, and they push them out, and they make them run around a truck or something. It's not, it's not exactly a favorite of mine because, again, oh, another tough one. I was doing a show in Pennsylvania, and 150 yards away, there was a guy giving helicopter rides. So I'm in this big open field with a lot of dirt. And...
We're almost out. A hundred feet or so above and my head during the induction, this guy decides to hop. So I had a helicopter. Helicopter. My head, a hundred feet above my head during the induction. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We lost you for a second then, though. Am I still on with you? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, you're still on. We can hear you. So, yeah, so um, you said okay. you created 90 speed inductions. But, um, um, and now, are they, I mean, I've, it, your, your butterfly induction was one of my favorite, uh, and, and still is, to be fair. It's, it, was, it was a big part of my show for a long time. Um, I think it's got all the elements. It's a very visual, it's a physical one, and it, 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 pro it provides great results as an induction. Um, where, do you, where do you see inductions going? I'm a big fan of, I mean, I like instant inductions, but on stage, I do like to draw them out a little bit to add some drama. What's what's your opinion on that? Being the trance master and the, the kind of the fastest hypnotist, what, what what are your thoughts? Um, I will never stop doing speed inductions. I love them so much. They're a part of who I am at this point. They're kind of once they get into your blood, you can't get rid of them. You know. Yeah. Um, I normally do a couple of demonstrations. Then I do a group speed induction. I put everybody out at once. And then I do a couple of minutes of deepening, and then I start the show. You know, I remember the old days when I used to spend, you know, 15 minutes doing an induction to get the show started. And let's face it, nowadays, there's no need for that. No. So. I mean, I must admit, it's amazing. I just get out there and bang old. it. So. Yeah. I, you know, I know we're standing on the shoulders of giants and that sort of thing. But. Um, We're all standing on the shoulders of giants. Get out there and make this happen. You know, make it work for yourself. Get out there and do crazy inductions. Make them work. Dream up something of your own and make that happen for yourself. Yeah. Are you still there? Hello? Yeah, you're still here. You're still here. Um, so um, one thing Get I that. always ask each guest is, is uh, if you would recommend two books, uh, which you think have either been influential on your work or you think are influential in the industry as a whole. If you were to recommend two books on stage hypnosis or performance, what would they be? Um, I love Woman McGill's Encyclopedia of Stage Hypnosis, you know, the new Encyclopedia of Stage Hypnosis. Uh, it's a bit dated, certainly, because it's got a lot of old stuff in it. But, you know, when you take a look at some of this stuff, it's not really that different. I also picked up a book some years ago from Shay Stockwell. It was a reprint of a um, learn how to do stage hypnosis from the 1920s or something, like correspondence course. And that book itself is actually pretty invaluable also. Things really don't change that much. You know, people are dancing. Uh, one of the things I thought was interesting is you're wading into the ocean, you know. And back in those days, the women had very long dresses on, so they were exposing their, you know, their shins, which was probably very racy back in the day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But um, I would recommend both of those books personally because – and the other thing I would say is – and I tell all my clinical students this too – just keep writing down everything that pops into yeah. your head. Even if you think it's like a weird idea. Yeah. Like, again, I mentioned Eddie Van Halen dying recently, but he used to just jot down – whatever popped into his head or write or record a little riff or something, which eventually became a song. So whatever creativity is hitting you, like I have this phone here and it's got a stylus in the bottom of it. It's a Galaxy Note 9. So I pull out the stylus and I jot down things. That's next to my bed. So if I wake up at 3.30 in the morning with an idea, I just jot it down and it works. Like I had an idea for an induction the other morning and it's 3.30 in the morning and I'm like, Okay, I, I saw what the image was of me doing this. It had to do with something along this line. I wrote it down. If I don't write this yeah. stuff down when it's hitting me, it goes yeah. out the window. So keep it pumping, keep it working, you know? And I, I think in, in any type of creativity, the more you kind of exercise that muscle, uh, the more it, it kind of gives you, the more you are creative, the more creative juices flow. So yeah, I mean it's it's nice. Right. There's a couple of hypnotists in the UK that I kind of kind of you know we chat, we talk about when we've had a bad show. We'll you know kind of 
air that out sort of thing and kind of exchange some ideas. Jason Morgan, who was on earlier, you know, we kind of, we went clay pigeon shooting and came up with a great idea for a show, which Jason, if you're watching, you still need to do that show, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, if you were to give one tip, which it, you think is kind of, a, you know, an important pivotal moment for anyone learning stage stuff, I've been doing it for a couple of years. One tip that you think is, you know, you have to share what would it be just get out there and get the performance under your belt and i would say the other half of, of that answer would be love 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 it eat it breathe it sleep it have it in your heart yeah. have it in your head be a stage hypnotist a hypnotist you know i see a lot of other hypnotists that are out there that are kind of poking along at this you know and okay if that's what you want to do but if you want to be fabuloso as we say in new york and you want to be terrific, fantastic, amazing, mind-blowing, then you've got to take this to a level. There was a rather forgettable movie from the um, late 60s, early 70s with Mick Jagger called Performance. And his character has a line in there. The only performance that moves is the one that borders on insanity. you got to go out there and do something wild and crazy, obviously safe. You know, keep it safe. Let's be certain about that. You know, nothing that endangers anybody. But make it wild. Keep adding things. Yeah. I had occasion to speak to a retired stage hypnotist out in Las Vegas the other day. And he was, you know, he's an older man. He gave me a couple of tips and ideas and different things. But I said to him, well, here's a couple of things I've yet to do, which I'm probably not going to reveal right now until I do them a few times. Let's make sure they work first. But he said to me, that's hysterical. But you've decided to mix together. You took an element of this, an element of that. You combine it. And it's going to be fantastic when you do it. So... The next show looks like it's going to be sometime in November, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen between now and then. I mean, November's not far away, and I'm looking forward to trying this stuff. You know, find music that you think will work for the show. This phone, I store all the MP3s in here. My phone is, is where I am, is where the music is. As long as I can patch that into a system, I got a show someplace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I must admit, so, I... I, I I have my show music on everything. I've got it on my phone, a USB stick. Uh, I've got it backed up everywhere. I've got it up on the cloud uh, just because it, no matter what happens, I've, I've got my show music with me come hell or high water. Because you can't, as we have learned tonight, you cannot rely on technology alone to work when you want it to. So, yeah. Uh, so, John, um, you, 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 do do a lot, you, you do do a lot of training. You were in the UK a few years ago. It's probably about 10 years ago you were in Manchester. I can't believe it was that long. I gotta come back. I miss you guys. I gotta come yeah, in and hang out so, with the boys and the girls. You know, I miss you guys. Exactly. We will. We will. We will. We will, we will make it happen. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. Manchester is the centre of the universe. Um, so yeah, we'll make that happen. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, John, uh, thank you very much. For, for... So again, the, the New Yorkers feel that way about New York City. Sorry, but yeah, I do agree with you yeah, for, yeah. for where you are. It's a hump, I gotta say at least. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. I just, I don't want to talk about it in January. January was brutal. It was so cold. Yeah. Yeah. But saying that, yeah, yeah, there January were kids Yeah. Yeah. There were kids huddled up in like a uh, closed up office building. Front, the front door was like boarded up. It was like a Who album. You know, it was all these kids hug, hugging each other to stay warm. Yeah. But they were out there. Yeah. You know, and so Manchester food. I really, and I can't pronounce that hotel. You remember the hotel I told you where I stayed in? What was it? Bewley's, Bewley's, how do you pronounce that? Oh, Be Bewley's, yeah, Bewley's. In Manchester? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No matter what, they said it was incorrect, so I give up. It's a B hotel. So oh, yeah. that was a nice place it, to stay, but it was a little chilly. In the Three blocks. Brilliant. John, thank you very much. I've put your website up on there. So Guys, let's make it happen. Let's do about. Let's let's we'll absolutely make it happen, John. Thank you very much for joining us and bear with, with us with the technology. Uh, good luck with your shows coming up in November as well. And uh, yes, uh, Billy, John, take care, and I'll see you later, guys. Thank you. Very thank much. you for having me. It was a blast. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you as well, John. Guys, thank you very much for uh, uh, bearing with us with the technical issues tonight. Um, each week we're trying to work on things and improve them. Um, it won't happen again. Trust me. Uh, guys, my name's been Grant Saunders. Thank you very much for joining us for tonight's show. Uh, we will be back at the usual time of 8 p.m. 
next week and it should be some good fun. If you have any questions or any ideas you want to bring up for the show, then please do um, ask them next week on the show. But for me, thank you very much and good night.